This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. doing up here in the attic? Comedy, it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nick. Everything's 3D horror today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, you used to get uh, our old TV sets, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the com net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded informed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight, it's yet another of our fine tribute shows, where tonight we we uh, give thanks to one one great actor who's been in television since who knows when and will be there for a long time to come. There was television. Since there was television, and tonight we talk about a uh, a Cleveland native, believe it or not. Yes, tonight it's Burgess, Burgess Meredith, Meredith here on Vast Wasteland, and we couldn't be more pleased and proud. But uh, before we jump into the show, just want to tell you, we're on, remember, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, if you want to write in to us, our address is Box 15, 15, 26, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And now, on to Burgess Meredith. Go, Wilbert. Okay, well, by golly, Burgess Meredith was born November 16th, 18, ah, 1908. Ooh, dyslexia, dyslexia. 1908. You know, it's so close. 1909, 1908. Okay, well, by golly, they have him down here as being in um, several shows. Well, let's start with um, the big story. He was the narrator. This was back in the 50s. So when, I remember the, what was that? It was like some like newspaper drama or something. Probably, sort of probably. It was drama. By golly, here's Mr. Novak, where he played a character named Martin Woodridge. This was from 64 to 65. And then one show that I remember him from, but I, so I won't mention that one. Then there's another one here. And, well, okay, I then, um, so I won't well, I won't talk about it yet because I'll, I'll be mentioning that when we actually talk about him here. Okay, but um, by golly, they say he began his career as a stage actor in the 30s, playing roles including the Dormouse and Ava Lugliers, production of Alice in Wonderland. 
Oh, and his first triumph on Broadway was in a winter set in 1935. Well, that's all interesting, but we're talking about that's 60s and 70s, 70s television. So, so we'll that. just jump all this, <laughs> and they don't mention anything else. Woo, hey! Yeah. Well, I can mention that later, too, by golly. Okay, well. <laughs> Pretty soon. We'll have a whole show of stuff later. <laughs> Twilight Zone. Oh, there we go. Burgess Meredith did a lot of Twilight Zone <laughs> epositions. A lot, a lot of Twilight Zone. He did, he did. Ooh, the one that just scared Mark to be Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Time, break those glasses. Time enough, Time enough at, at last. last. Ooh. Where he played Mr. Henry Bemis, who was a, a bank worker, and he always liked to spend his lunch hour reading, and he went down to the cellar to read into the vault. And when he went down there one time, well, the world blew up because what? there was a big atomic war. Oh, my. <laughs> but um, he got out of there, and he just, yeah, there's yeah. just, um, all the, he's, everybody's gone, but he's got all these books, and he never had time enough to read. Now he's got time enough to read, and he went around, and he stacked up all these books, and he was so darn happy, and then he was walking around looking at all the books, and oops, he drops his glasses, and they break. <laughs> And it's his only pair. <laughs> it was the only pair that he, he had. He had to spend eternity not reading. <laughs> the only like, thing he really wanted oh to do. Oh, no. Oh, no. My glasses. And there's Mr. Dingle the Strong, where he was this little guy that was in a bar drinking, and these um, Venusians, no, these Martians came in first, and they made him very strong. And so he went around being very strong for a long time until the, about the end of the show where he lost his strength. Wow, and then these Venusians come in yeah. and made him very smart. And so he started being very smart at the end of the show. The smart. And it was just an interesting one. Then there's one called The Obsolete Man that he was in. And I don't really remember this one at all. <laughs> What's that one about? Well, it's in a future society where all books have been banned along with all religion. And Wadsworth, Wordsworth rather, which is Burgess Meredith, was a God-fearing librarian. Well, by golly, here he's a library <laughs> person again. again. Well, and he's granted three requests. And blah, blah, it blah, goes blah, on and on and on and on and on <laughs> here. Okay, and then there's another one, The Printer's Devil. Ooh, mm. where Burgess Meredith played, ooh, of all people, Mr. Smith. Well, here's <laughs> an imaginative name. <laughs> Very original, yes, by golly. This was his fourth and final Twilight Zone appearance, and he's playing a character far removed from the good and gentle men he played in the other ones. And, um... Oh, well, this one was probably. It probably was. Yeah. It's starting to be evil. Evil. Mm. So we move on from the evil role that he played here in Twilight Zone to probably his best known role on the 60s television, that of the Penguin dun, 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 <laughs> on Batman. I don't think he'll ever live that one down. Because he, I mean, that's, that's he like... He made that role his. He I mean. made that role, it became his role, and it's like, any time I look at him now, I can't help but going, whack, 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 whack. Well, now, you there, remember there. when he did Those Amazing Animals? Now, I don't remember exactly when that was done. Well, actually, that was in 80 and 81, but that's okay. But his mascot there was Penny the Penguin, and they would come waddling out together at the beginning of the show. And he, you can still hear him. You can still hear him narrating commercials and things. And he, every time I hear, I just, I just expect him to go whack. <laughs> well, that looks interesting how that started. Didn't that start because he was allergic to the cigarettes the penguin smoked? And instead of coughing, he made this sound. Wasn't it something like that that got him that trademark little? Yes, it was something noise. along that line, which was most interesting. It was like a happy accident. Yes, and it just stuck. Yeah. And it stuck. That's right. I mean, you, you had you had three cat women, you yeah. had uh, two Riddlers, yeah. but only one penguin. One penguin. One penguin. <laughs> who who else could fill those shoes? That's and right. then in the in the in the Batman movie, he just does something that I think is just one of he 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 plays an actor. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, he, he plays the penguin as an actor yeah. who's pretending to be Commodore Schmidlap. Yeah. <laughs> and and I I this one just cracks me up. He's he's pretending to be this Commodore, and it's like. I don't know whether Batman or Robin really can't tell that it's him, yeah. or if they're just pretending they yeah. can't tell or what. But they boy, were pretending. did he they have him? Smart, you they know. just had him bamboozled. They, he just had them bamboozled for a while there because he's going, <laughs> I'm Commodore Schmidlap. I'm not the penguin. Or this penguin quack, character. Quack, 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 it's like, quack, well, quack. wait a minute. <laughs> well, when you're and a crime I'm, fighter, you have to be very careful because you don't want to pull something like this, folks, on America's Most Wanted and arrest the actor. That's right. You and gotta I'm, be careful. I just happen to have these ideas. henchmen here and yeah. <laughs> hidden in my. <laughs> <laughs> coat, and I'll bring them back to life in the Batcave using the, the, what the, was heavy, the, water. the heavy, heavy water, water. <laughs> so that they just 
instantly disappear when you hit them. But when did any matter? It was it was just funny. <laughs> okay, then a show that I really remember him from was Search. Now Search mm -hmm. had a um, had a TV movie um, pilot called Probe, I believe it was, where they had one one operative, and what it was was basically have this search headquarters, which is an underground kind of a um, oh I'd call it a surveillance kind of thing, where they had um, well they had these three operatives, but in this one they just had the one they have thing, and they have a thing in his tooth, which he can kind of tap out Morse code on, and then they have um, rings, or they have necklaces, which have little built-in cameras in them, and so they can walk around and they can just pretty much spy on just about anything, yeah. and then they can also <laughs> radio back into the, um, into the search headquarters, and he can talk to them through the, uh, the through tooth, the tooth implant. Wow, well, uh, you think they, they could, could like... And really they also had that? a thing in their ear so that they could talk. And he was like the head operative. His name was Cameron. And he, I mean, not the head operative, but he was the head worker back in the underground right. search thing. So yeah, it's you like didn't, you didn't have birds just going out and no, no. So he he stuff. couldn't do that. So like when they had the show search, they had three operatives. But it's like um, Burgess and the crew were always there in every show. But they would have one of each of the operatives in like one a week. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, but it's like Burgess was really the major star there, and he would always be coming from, oh, no, you don't want to go this way, you want to go this way. Make sure you pay attention to that man behind the curtain or something he like that. He was the rock the show was built on. Exactly, right? exactly. And it was, it was a very, a very good, I'd, right. I'd like to see somebody bring this show back because it was just interesting. It really was. I mean, probably the technology now is um, Could you imagine antiquated. But well, who, who did this? Is this one of these, uh, I'm, I'm betting this was this. Hmm, let's yeah. see. Let's see if We've I, only got a hundred books yeah. here, guys. I bet we could find out even. <laughs> yeah, but well, let's 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 look but that thing up. But wouldn't that be neat if you could like have that thing in your tooth because then you wouldn't need a car phone. Yeah. Ooh. Well, see, it's like you had it in your tooth, and you also so had an cool. implant in your ear, so that they could they could That's talk right. to him and he could answer them by you know either doing one for yes, two for no, you know, or something like that. Or oh, it would be so cool. You could cheat on exams. I didn't say that. Okay. But <laughs> the probe division of world securities has reached the ultimate in sophistication and technological development in equipping its agents as they travel around the world on missions. Each agent had a transmitter and an earphone implanted in one ear, enabling him to keep in contact and contact with the mission well, control. Okay, okay. He also carried a miniaturized scanning device in a ring or a tie clip that provided visual contact as well. And the staff at mission control could maintain su complete surveillance on whatever was happening for any of the agents. So. Okay. So who, did the, so who did the show? That was our first that was question. question. Who yeah. did the show? Is it same Back to the original was, question. Um, <laughs> hmm. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely so no, no one did the show. <laughs> Nobody. It was just an adventure. <laughs> it's just a production. Just a production. <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> well, anyway, go on. Oh, I'll, I'll see if I, I can find any information about this. I want to call it a Quinn Martin, but I don't think it was really necessarily. It started off as being part of a movie of the week kind of thing. And it's mm -hmm. kind of branched off from there. Mm. But, well, anyway, then let's move on here. There was another show that was... Ah, here oh. we go. Okay. Leslie Stevens. Oh, okay. Who also produced Outer Limits. Ah, well, so there, there we go. <laughs> so, so see, it says the 72 plot pilot was originally called Probe. Probe, yeah, yeah. There you go. So oh, there we there's are. There's where you got your name, Probe. Well, see, it was, it was Probe in the pilot. Okay. I knew that. It's so silly you think I did. Anyway, um, what oh, else we have oh, here? We've got I uh, bow to your bra great brain. <laughs> and the other My thing, great brain's weighing me down. <laughs> uh, well, the other thing is the show, uh, the idea of the, uh, of the agents, uh, one agent a week in kind of a rotating format is exactly like the, uh, the other show that Leslie Stevens produced, which, which was the name of the game. Aha! Uh -huh. so, yeah. so both the same concept. They just kind of took it to a spy format. Well, see, the name of the game was first, and then right. they decided we took the same format, but we'll, we'll make it technologically tweak it, tweak it a little uh, bit, and then advance. turn it back out again. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah so this was, is Burgess's show. Right. That's right, Burgess, okay. And then he did another thing where he played a, another bad guy, and I can't remember the exact name, but it was like either the Return of Captain Nemo or the Amazing Captain Nemo or mm -hmm. something like that. But it was nice. done as a, um, right. it was like a three, there were three hour uh, long shows. And they were on a Wednesday. I remember specifically because um, the third one, we were all ready to watch it. And uh, we went to get a pizza. And we were on the way back and oh, ran into a traffic sign or something. Amazing. So, uh, missed it. <laughs> the return of Captain Nemo. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. All right. Like the amazing return no. of Captain <laughs> <laughs> the During that routine war way. games, Tom Franklin and Jim Porter, U.S. Naval Underwater Intelligence Agents, yeah, find port. trapped in a coral reef beneath the sea the troubled submarine Nautilus. 
Captain Nemo, blah, blah, blah. He got stuck under the reef, blah, blah, blah. And they went on adventures, basically. Yeah, they, freed him, they freed him from the reef first. And and but it was another on. Irwin oh. Allen. Okay. It was an Irwin Allen. By golly, who else could have done that? Lou, they That's had right. One. What Burgess Meredith's name was in there. He was Nemo's... He was, no, he was Dr. Waldo Cunningham, the evil modern-day scientist, Nemo's nemesis. It was it was really yeah, great right. too because he had this Professor uh, Waldo. How can Professor how evil Waldo. Can somebody Waldo be? Well, I mean, you got the name <laughs> well, Waldo. You could be pretty ticked off if you your name's name Waldo. Waldo. Yeah, you, you could be kind of uh, like twisted, yeah, I suppose. You, you got to get back at the world for making fun of you with that Waldo name. <laughs> yeah. So you got to become an evil scientist. Scientist. And he had these uh, these robots <laughs> on his on his ship on his submarine because they were well they were underwater. So he had this one robot who was. This was after. Good thing they were this, was, this was yeah. after the after the Star <laughs> Wars thing, you know. So it's like everybody had to have robots now that were um, pretty rel well, relatively humanoid, and and had these funny voices, which were actually like uh, people in rubber suits pretending to be robots. But hey, that's okay. And so he's like a tall one. They had a tall one, and he's um, he would always go around and he would give the orders and things. And then um, there was another one who would sit up in the in the little bubble kind of thing on top of the submarine who would fire the delta beam. Oh! <laughs> he'd be up there, and every time he'd fire that delta beam, he'd be like, boom, and he'd, <laughs> he'd look like he's going to fall out of the thing. But this is Burgess's show, so let's, yeah. let's get on with that. <laughs> we, keep, we keep straying. Oh, well, I digress. Anyway, yes. <laughs> um, he wasn't in The Man from Atlantis anywhere, was he? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so, but I do have a pilot here. Kate Bliss and the Ticker Tape Kid. Ooh. <laughs> this was a pilot that a never Western? went anywhere. Comedy Western. Lighthearted and Misadventures of Kate Bliss, a beautiful turn of the century private detective. Hey, that's original. <laughs> so you got a comedy western detective kind of deal. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whatever, he just fit every single format in there. The pilot depicts Kate's attempts to solve the problems of Lord Devery, a land baron who is being terrorized by a gang of outlaws led by Clint Allison, an ex Wall Street businessman turned Robin Hood, who Kate calls the ticker tape kid. Why the heck this didn't go anywhere? I'm amazed. <laughs> and playing William Blackstone is Burgess Meredith. Okay. William Blackstone, not the magician. <laughs> no, I, no, we hope not. <laughs> okay. But let's see here. Burgess, he, um, well, one thing, he, he won an Emmy in 1977 for his portrayal of lawyer Joseph Welch in the documentary drama Tail Gunner Joe about the life and times of Senator Joseph McCarthy. Can't we all stay home and watch that? He also provided the narration for various specials, and he still does, by God. Yes. <laughs> well, you can't turn on a cheese commercial without hearing Burgess. Cheese. <laughs> it just makes everything better. Wonderful. <laughs> and then there's a, I have a, let's see, we got another one here, if I can find, oh yeah, a second pilot, another Western comedy drama <laughs> called Lock, Stock, and Barrel. Well, the misadventures of newlyweds Rochelle and Claire Roselle. Rochelle and, and Claire? Rochelle and Claire. Okay. Wait a minute. Claire Bridgman. I know why this one didn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Claire was Tim Matheson, so, okay. Okay. As they seek to begin a new life in Colorado during the 19th century, also called Hitched, the sequel pilot film. And Burgess pay, played Purcell, or Purcell, I don't know, P U R S L E. Purcell. Yeah. Say it the way you, you like. Purcell. That's Whatever right. you're most comfortable with, we won't tell anybody. That's right. So there we are. It's a secret. And we had one more here. Oh, I think I got it here. Yeah. The New Healers. Mm. <laughs> when was this? Uh, 1972. Okay. The story of three people, Calvin Briggs and Jimmy Martin, ex-Vietnam medics, of course, and Michelle Johnson, an ex-nurse, who joined forces to help, to help Dr. Simmons played by Burgess, Burgess Meredith, Meredith. Okay. <laughs> an aging physician, care for the people of Hope, a rural community in California. The pilot depicts their efforts to gain the confidence of the people who are distrustful of the young medics. And that was Robert Foxworth, Kate Jackson, and Jonathan Lip. <laughs> hey, where is Jonathan Lip? <laughs> where is Jonathan Lip now? We Jonathan don't know. Right, we, we'd like to hear yeah. from you. <laughs> just, don't hear, just don't hear enough from Jonathan Lip. You just don't. <laughs> Don't give me any of that lip. <laughs> Maybe that's why he just couldn't make. Where can you go in Hollywood with a name like Joseph Lip? Lip. <laughs> well, because it, it was Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> but this oh, is Burgess. Oh, John Lip. Burgess but this show. is Burgess's show. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we said that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so what else we got? Mm. So, gee. Let's see. Well, we could do a what if. <laughs> what if he did a series today? Who, 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 should, who should he star with? 
Burgess Meredith today? Well, let's see. Who hasn't he worked with? Who's still around? <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of folks out there. Well, well he but, play uh, the old fill in the blank. Uh, the old. <laughs> maybe he could play like if they do the, uh, the 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 my favorite Martian thing. He could play like old Uncle Somebody who comes to live with Tim. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not just put him on Trek? I mean, everyone's yeah. done Trek except Burgess. Well, this is true. Maybe Burgess is afraid to fly on one of them starships. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, certainly got, he's done all the zone and everything, you would think. Uh, well, all his zone things were down to earth, earth, though. Yeah, that's true. I've never seen Burgess in anything. Well, the underwater thing, underwater. I've never seen him up in the air. I mean, not that sure? I'd go out and throw him up. In <laughs> <laughs> never seen Burgess in, a, in, a, in an up-in-the-air vehicle. I don't think he ever did any of the airports or um, any of those. Boy, that's, mm -hmm. and that's stunning, considering... <laughs> the number of people. I don't think he's done any of the other Irwin Allen kind of things, either. You know, the earthquake. Well, we got earthquakes. We got... Uh, Oh, we've got every natural great big disaster floods. We've got Earth. volcanoes. We've got. I don't think Burgess was in any of those, and I don't know. I, 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 I don't know why. <laughs> now he did do Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. We, did we could mention. I mean, that is a movie, but we could mention him as, as Rocky's first trainer. That's right. But, yeah, that's probably. And then he did, of course, uh, he went full circle doing the narration for the Zone movie. Yes, yes, yes he did. Yes. Yeah, we did that. Really? And now he just narrates everything. <laughs> but you know, he's never been out of work. That's right. That's he's never right. done anything. I'm sure someone's out there developing a new series for him. <laughs> They're just developing. So there's more commercials of another. Oh, yeah. We could. <laughs> what, what, what would we put Burgess in? By golly, um... I mean, gee, let, let's think up a vehicle for Bur Burgess Meredith. Maybe you can yeah. write in and just <laughs> write in and give us a vehicle, a new vehicle for Burgess Meredith. Because we need to see Burgess more Burgess Meredith more. vehicles. So, the new Burgess has, Meredith has he, show. Has he been a private eye? <laughs> I Everybody's so. been a well, private eye. Well, he's been eye. involved with him, but he, I don't think he's ever been a private eye. I mean, he could uh, easily do that. Um, he could be the, the grumpy detective or something. <laughs> 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 the grumpy detective. The <laughs> grumpy detective. Give him a dog. Thursdays at 8. The <laughs> grumpy detective and his dog. Maybe we could do it here. <laughs> Said, Burgess, well, uh, come down idea. to the studio yeah. and you know, be a grumpy detective. What the heck is this? Machine's broken. I can't. Well, he's truly someone who's started out at the beginning of TV and is still going, much like our other tribute person. Yeah, Bill well, Bixby. Bill Bixby. Yeah, Bill, that's that's right. They haven't done anything together. We should, let's, let's, we should create a vehicle for both of them. Well, that's what I was saying. He could, you know, if they do the uh, My Favorite Martian return. No, no, we need something fresh. Oh, something fresh, fresh and new. Fresh. Okay. Fresh and sweet. Well, let, no, Bert, um, Bill's already done quite a few things. But, um, maybe they could do a Western together. What do you think? You know, uh, he, could, he could be the grumpy detective back away. <laughs> I don't know why. this grumpy detective yeah, grumpy I don't know why. <laughs> that grumpy detective and his horse. <laughs> I can't ride the thing. Well, that sounds too much like Cannon or Ironsider. Those grumpy detectives. Well, they're, they weren't or grumpy. The Batman they were Batman Jake and the... Well, that was Never watch that one. It scares me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way his little eyes yeah. squint all the time. Yeah. And they're real bright, but they squint. Yeah. Like he's That's been... Cute. Well, well, let's see. We're, we, I just wanted to go over some stuff. Uh, this is, of course, the end of our second season here on ACTV. And two big seasons. Two, two, two big five. seasons. And we'll be moving into our Whoa. third big season here on ACTV. Because you haven't told us to stop yet. <laughs> yeah. We're we going to be on until you surrender. <laughs> yeah. When you surrender, we'll go away. <laughs> That's right. Give up or something like that. Well, let's see. Uh, coming up uh, next season, we've already... Got some exciting shows coming up. Uh, we do? Yeah. Exciting! Yeah, we got them scheduled exciting and everything. Exciting show. Exciting! Ooh. We've got, <laughs> we've got uh, coming up a big Norman Lear show. We're going to go through the entire Norman Lear universe, as it were. And uh, we got a show on, what's this, band shows. What is that? I don't know. You well, wrote it. Well, little... shows with people, uh, groups, I mean, we're about bands. Like, well, like that's the, what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> not not band shows, like shows we couldn't never show, or no. shows they never B show. B-A-N-D, not B-A-N-N-E-D. Oh. <laughs> well, then we got a big variety shows show coming up, uh, animal shows. I know you're looking forward to that Oh, one. yeah. The big animal shows, which we could talk about, those amazing, amazing animals. Uh, and then we're uh, excited to be coming. Uh, we've 
a lot of people have been asking for, when are you going to do another one of those big versus shows? Like yeah, a big I get Mayberry versus every day. and, and uh, Can't Beverly. walk down the street well, without uh, someone asking me that. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to do another one. Okay. We're doing Samantha versus Jeannie. Who would win in a fight? <laughs> <laughs> so, so be looking forward to that. And uh, then we're going to be, uh, it's another big, uh, another big tribute show. Of course, yeah, we do that. The, we'll have to dig up somebody else. Yeah, and maybe we'll actually get some more over. material on uh, <laughs> some one of those people. So we don't have to pad like this, like we're doing right now. Well, well, hey, <laughs> you know, that's, 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 the fun of, that's the fun of cable TV. That's the fun of TV in general, being able to do that. Just be able to sit here and just, just fill in blab, time. You basically, know, just because we don't have anything I bet we could learn something from Burgess, though. <laughs> If he That's was right. here, if, if he was, was, here, here, was here, he'd be crabbing at it. Hey, 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 what the heck? Don't you, <laughs> Why don't you have some more Don't you remember that? I don't know, I don't know where you guys get this. I don't know where you guys get this, uh, this, uh, this is crabby bit because, <laughs> like, I always think of it as the kindly guy that, gee, I wish well, he was my he grandfather. But now he's the crabby <laughs> guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't perceive him that way. Well, he's like the Wilford Brimley now. Yeah. <laughs> No, Wilford's just uh, getting enough Wilford's oatmeal. Oh, he's yeah, too, too, many too, oatmeal too much oatmeal. <laughs> That's right. Too much or not enough. No, I don't perceive Burgess as a crabby guy. Well, anyway. Well, I never looked at the penguin as being the nicest guy in the world either. <laughs> but he was fun. <laughs> well, anyways, I think, we've, I think we've yeah. beaten this subject in the ground. So let's uh, let's say goodnight uh, for all of us here at Vast Wasteland. Uh, we'll see you next time. And remember, we're on Tuesdays at six. Wednesdays at 10 and Thursdays at 3 on ACTV if you feel like tuning into this show again. But then anyway, again, if you don't, well, I guess you won't be watching this one either. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways. So you didn't hear that. That's right. You well, from me. <laughs> good night, everybody. We're done. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you might be.